Hello booktube and welcome back to my library tour. We're going to finish off the top shelf of this bookcase here. Uh, the rest of the bookcase, the entirety of it, is romance novels and I asked the last time if any of you wanted to see that and quite a few of you said you did and that if you, the rest of you, a lot of the rest of you said that if it bores you, you if it's not your thing you'll just skip it. So I might do that. I might just, rather than plot descriptions and long digressions, I might just take you through every single romance. Just show you the cover and talk about it. Uh, just, you know, describe the author and the cover and then move on. I don't know if, if that's worth it, though. I'm still thinking about it because it's hundreds of books. There would be whole videos of doing that. I don't know. As a record, as a video record of what my library is right now at the end of 2019, it might be worth doing. Uh, but anyway, that certainly doesn't affect this shelf, this top shelf. So we'll just move on here. A lot of these are Norton Critical Editions, like we saw last time. Uh, but uh, some of them are not. Uh, starting with this great book, uh, boy, this this cover is filthy. Uh, but this is David Quammen, the great David Quammen. This is Natural Acts, a collection of natural history essays that are uh, absolutely terrific, <laughs> absolutely terrific. He is, I cannot praise him highly enough. Uh, I have, I don't have as, all of his work, and I really should. I really should have everything that he did. Uh, uh, oh, okay, all right. This next one is the Wayne Rebhorn translation of. Uh, Boccaccio's Decameron. And am I right in guessing why I have this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is this is the trade paperback of the Rebhorn Decameron. Uh, and I have it uh, not only because I really liked uh, the Rebhorn translation, but also because uh, I am blurbed in the... Can you see that? Where, where are we looking here? In the quarterly conversation. Uh for the book I wrote a nice long piece about Boccaccio and about the camera in general uh, I really like the Red Point translation and I, the, the hardcover is deadly dull boring <laughs> so uh, so I'm glad I have the paperback uh, okay this next one is uh, something that readers long looked forward to I certainly long look forward to it this is Christopher Logue's account his adaptation of uh, the Iliad um, War Music is a compilation of a few different slim volumes that at times looked like they would never finish. It looked like his project would never finish. It took an absurdly long amount of time, longer, as he put it, uh, to write his account of Homer's Iliad than it took Homer to write the Iliad. Uh, but the result is weird. The result is weird and wonderful. This is a, as strange an echo chamber and adaptation of Homer as you will ever encounter. And I would argue also brilliant. Uh, Okay, this is Cornelia Otis Skinner and Emily Kimbrough. This is their classic, Our Hearts Were Young and Gay. Uh, this is, this edition is, yes, illustrated. Uh, I, I loved it, absolutely love it. It is so much fun. I, this came out uh, a long time ago, 1944, 1942. Uh, it's, a, it's an account of two young women in, going out and encountering the world, and it's utterly delightful. I, I, uh, it had a huge print run. It was a huge success. And then it came out in a mass market paperback and had another huge success. Uh, I don't know that it's in print now. Our, our hearts were young and gay. I don't know that it's in print now. I don't know that anyone has any plans to reprint it. I don't think it's remembered. But it was once upon a time just a, a standby. Everybody coming into a bookstore asked for it. Uh, ah, okay. All right. Uh, Something is making this a little uneven. I wonder why that is. Uh, this is by Steve Jones, and this is rather cheekily the subtitled The Origin of Species Updated. This is uh, almost like a whale, in which the author writes about mm, evolution by means of natural selection, writes about Darwin's original conception and then all that we've learned since, in amazingly readable prose. This That's the thing that I mainly remember about, the, about this book, is how pithy it is, how quotable it is on every page. Um, and we just, we just, sorry, this is bothering me. I'm wondering if there's something stuck down here that, oh, oh, there is. There's something buried. <laughs> it's an acorn. <laughs> it's nice and dried. A nice dried acorn. And I know why it's there, because uh, Frida swallowed it. She swallowed a new, when it was fresh, a new acorn one day. Uh, and for some reason... I must have been paying attention to something else because I didn't notice her swallow it and then she just 
spoofed it back up <laughs> later that night. Just it came out whole. She didn't chew it or anything. And she certainly didn't digest it, so I'm glad she didn't choke on it. <laughs> uh, so I kept it. <laughs> These odd mementos that dog people keep. Uh, then the next book is by Jennifer Toth. It is a classic. You should all go out and read it and then endure many, many a nervous afternoon. This is mole people. <laughs> this is her account, at least back then. This was in the 80s, I think, or the 90s, 1990. Uh, when did this come out? 1993. Uh, her account of traveling down into the bowels of the subway system in New York City. Go down into the lowest service tunnels and then go down five tunnels lower. Five levels lower. Places, abandoned tunnels, abandoned crawlways and whatnot where no workers go, where the subways do not run, uh, but where people live. And she encountered those people and she encountered rumors of lots of other people as well, even living on even deeper levels down in the the uh, subterranean canyons underneath Manhattan. Uh, an utterly fascinating book. I don't know how much of it is true, but uh, or how much of it is true anymore. It could be that it was all true then, and none of it is true now, but one way or another, you'll never read anything like it. <laughs> and then we hit a raft of uh, Norton Critical Editions. Some of these are older, some of them are newer, because I've, I've been loving Norton Critical Editions forever. Uh, this is the Norton Critical Edition of uh, Erasmus. Uh, this is The Praise of Folly and other stuff. I think the Julius Exclusus is in here. Uh, lots of letters. Uh, and then a huge amount of critical commentary, which I love. Uh, so uh, it's one of... And you'll notice if you've been paying any attention to these library tours and this library tour that my Erasmus books are not all together. And I don't have much in the way of, of critical Erasmus books. They strike me, most of them, as just incredibly boring. Um, for an author who never was, an, an author who in his, his entire life of writing was never boring. Uh, but I, I like this one. I like the essays in the back of this one. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. This Norton Critical Edition is great. It's one of their great ones. Some of them are not better than others. Of course, if you if you come out with books for 50 years, that's going to be true. This is the Norton Critical Edition of John Donne's poetry, which I have gussied up with dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, and I, it's fantastic. Just fantastic. Again, I don't. I would never use this as my uh, book for Dunn's poetry, but uh, so I go to it for the notes and all of the critical stuff in the back. Uh, those of you who might be joining me on this one video, uh, that is what these things are. You Norton know, critical editions. That you have the uh, canonical work of of text at the beginning with footnotes, and it's a brief introduction, and then you have uh, supporting essays original reviews, uh, source material, like for instance if you have something like uh, King Lear by William Shakespeare, there'll be historical source, quasi-historical, legendary folklore source material, anything we think Shakespeare might have used. The relevant passages in Holmshed, for instance, will be in his history plays and whatnot. You get that, you get contemporary views, contemporary reactions, and you get a whole range of critical reactions in the centuries after. And it's fascinating. It puts, it really does put the work in context. This is the Oristia. Uh This is uh, uh, the Oliver Taplin translation, uh, which I don't think I. I think when I got this, this Oristia in the mail, because I I have, in recent years I have very gratefully, very gratefully ended up on the Norton Critical list, so I get them in the mail. I don't have to go to bookstores and hunt for them anymore. Uh, and I think when I got this, I immediately read the new essays, but I don't think I read the, the translation, which kind of defeats the purpose. I should do that. Uh, oh, all right, all right. We saw this already. Only the, the, This is Shakespeare's Hamlet in a Norton Critical Edition, one play with tons of writing. And we saw this, uh, the, the newest edition, which has Benedict Cumberbatch on the cover. This is the previous edition that has Jude Law on the cover. <laughs> uh, and I think I might even have another earlier translation, or another earlier uh, Norton Critical Edition of Hamlet. Uh, somewhere, I think. Uh, oh my, okay, all right, this is uh, a Norton Critical Edition of On Liberty by John Stuart Mill, a brain cracker of a book uh, that I really need to, I have been so harsh on philosophy uh, in 2019 on this channel that I really, really need, really need to reread some stuff. Maybe not flagellate myself with Aristotle, <laughs> but, but maybe some other stuff. I reread uh, Utilitarianism by John Stuart Mill just a little while ago this year, uh, and it didn't do anything to unseat my criticism of this stupid genre, but maybe on Liberty Wood. Uh, then we have The Metamorphosis of Kafka. This is the Susan Bernofsky translation that is, in my opinion, the best one, uh, and it's got this lovely, this lovely cover. I wrote about this thing 
uh, her translation in this edition with I'm glad they kept the original cover artwork I wrote about this thing when it first came out uh, but I don't seem to be on the paperback and you know I've never actually gone and looked to see uh, if Norton Critical did a gigantic Norton Critical edition of The Tale of Genji. I really should go and see, not just to look for my blurb, but because I would really like the essays in the back of that thing. I'll have to see if that thing exists. Uh, okay, we saw this on this channel. This is a Norton Critical, new Norton Critical edition of Othello. Just a single Shakespeare play, but well worth it. Uh, some of the Norton Criticals are in different sizes. Some of them are taller than others, and they're quite able to figure out why that is. We saw a couple. Uh, the Dickens, I think, uh, Tale of Two Cities was a taller one. Um, this is a Gordon Teske's edition of uh, Paradise Lost. Gordon Teske has a new book <laughs> we will be talking about. Uh, this is fantastic, just fantastic. Uh, beats almost every critical edition of, Crime, of uh, Paradise Lost that I have ever seen. That was one really early one, the Lecompte edition from uh, 60 years ago that is terrific. The, initials are, the annotations are terrific. This might be just as good. Uh, okay, then we have uh, High Point. <laughs> high Point of Steve's career. We've already seen it, uh, but this made me squeal with delight. This is the Norton Critical Edition of Crime and Punishment. Very pretty thing. And this is the Katz translation, and I, on, this critical, on this Norton Critical Edition, which every student in the country is going to use, I am on the back. I am blurbed on the back. So that was uh, that was a delight. <laughs> uh, then we have another Norton Critical Edition of War and Peace. Uh, this is still the George... It's the same one, only it's got different essays, and it's a different size, and it's a different look. Uh, do I have the other one? Yeah, this is... See, you've got, I've got two Norton Critical Editions. This one is actually taller than the other one. Uh, and they're not exactly the same, so like a, like a War and Peace fanatic, I kept them both. Uh, Okay, then uh, we have, this is a sort of um, an absolutely irreplaceable Norton Critical Edition of the, the uh, poetry of Edmund Spencer. This is just an amazing Spencer volume to have. Uh, and it makes me all the more encouraged that as great as this thing is for the Spencer fanatic to read, this is the one that students are going to be using, so they're going to be encountering Spencer in the best possible company. That is wonderful. That is just wonderful. Uh, and then the last of the Canterbury, the last of the uh, Norton Critical Editions is this Canterbury Tales. Uh, this is 16 Tales in the General Prologue. Uh, and this is, uh, yeah, this is in Chaucer's original uh, and has tons of essays. And uh, I've had uh, many Norton Criticals of the Canterbury Tales. I don't know where all of them are. Probably not, I don't have them anymore. Uh, but I have this one now. So the, so the Norton Criticals here, of these and all the ones we saw yesterday, uh, form a nice solid nucleus of great works. A nice solid shelf of great works uh, with essays, with accompanying essays. That's a lot of fun. So that if a new book, a new edition, somebody's new edition of Paradise Lost or something comes along, it's great to be able to sink myself into these things for a couple of hours and learn, you know, get the lay of the land again. Uh, then this shelf finishes up with UK trade paperback editions of just random stuff. Uh, first one is John Boyne's novel A Ladder to the Sky. Uh, in this, the UK trade paperback looks much, much better uh, than the American edition. Uh, then John Banville's Ancient Light. Again, I just love something about it. The, the, uh, the cheap binding, the, the war ration paper and whatnot. Uh, then Maeve Binchy's great book Tower Road. Uh, in a UK trade paperback. I wish I had them all. Uh, and finally, speaking of wishing I had them all, this is P.D. James's The Murder Room. I would love to find every P.D. James in these black-spined uh, UK trade paperbacks, but uh, I'm sure I will. The Brattle will provide. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That is the, the rest of this top shelf of this bookcase. And all that remains in this bookcase, the whole of it, is hundreds and hundreds of romance novels. So maybe instead of doing every single one of them, maybe we'll just do one shelf, give you a feel for it. Uh, or maybe one shelf of the Regency romances and one shelf of the normal romances, uh, the contemporary romances, and just call it a day there. And then that'll be the end of this library tour. There aren't any other books in this little room. <laughs> I've done hundreds and hundreds of books in here. Uh, I'll think about it some more, and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. You'll be the first to know. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up, uh, but I will see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.